Okay, so that brings us to the last talk, uh, even less common perhaps than lateral uh, compartment OA is patellofemoral isolated patellofemoral OA. A disclaimer is that I was one of the designers for uh, the Biomed patellofemoral joint, the Vanguard joint uh, for resurfacing. When um, Oxford and Biomed merged, that design and the instruments have been kept aside. So we don't know what's going to happen to our, our design and our efforts. Anyway, most of this is from uh, a chapter that we were asked to write in this book on partial knees. So really isolated patellofemoral osteoarthritis is pre pretty uncommon. It's infrequently performed. The past results were very bad. The implant choice is quite confusing. The anatomy is complex as is the kinematics. So basically, you've got everything against you when you start off doing PFOA. So you've got to be quite a sadist if you want to get involved with PFOA or you've got to be a real ardent supporter of partial knees. So why should you do it then if you have all these things stacked against you? Really because you say if it is an isolated PFOA, then the results can be outstanding. That is the key, especially in a younger patient. So we are not talking about very elderly people. So we'll come to the, the indications. So the challenges are the anatomy because you're dealing with a sulcus which becomes with where the angle reduces from proximal to distal, it narrows down. You have trochlear dysplasia which is often very common and these are the four types described by David de Jure. So you can have a lot of this dysplasia in the trochlea and that's going to be a very key point to remember. The kinematics at the patella joint, patellofemoral joint are extremely complex because they're affected by what happens at the hip, what happens in the knee, what happens in the ankle, foot, rotation, everything. So it's pretty complex. The contact points keep changing as flexion occurs. The manner in which the patella is guided into the trochlea changes in early flexion. It's the MPFL which guides it into the trochlea and then it's the lateral facet in deeper flexion which maintains it within the groove. And then if, if the bony anatomy was not bad enough, you have soft tissue problems as well with contracture of the lateral retinaculum and elongation of the MPFL. So as I said, everything is stacked against you if you want to do this procedure. You may also have patella alter. You may have a distortion of the tibial tuberosity position. And as I told you, valgus in the knee, antiversion, the foot, you know, plano valgus, tibial torsion, all of these can add to the problem. So it's actually one of the most challenging surgeries to do because of all this. But there are two basic key principles that you need to understand. If there's a dysplastic trochlea, then you provide a groove with the normal depth to guide the patella. So you have to determine whether there's dysplasia. Second, rebalance the extensor mechanism. Understanding that there can be contracture uh, laterally and elongation medially. So your tracking is very important. So your indications really are in this very narrow group of 40 to 55 year old. 55 to 60 you may extend it. Beyond 60, I think probably most people would consider doing a total knee because by then the other compartments start getting affected. So isolated bone on bone, limited to the patellofemoral joint. If it's in conjunction with medial OA, you can consider it and we've done some bicompartmentals when you have failed conservative treatment in this age group. So essentially you'll have three subgroups, dysplastic PFJs, PFOA with normal morphology, just isolated PFOA but no dysplasia and post-traumatic you know, patella fractures followed by OA where everything else is normal. The contraindications are obviously if you have in your main joint any arthritis, if you have any malalignment of the tibia with the femur, patella baha, uh, if the CD ratio is less than 0.8, fibrosis or scarring of the patella tendon. So these are not good ideas and severe obesity. So the history basically involved two design philosophies. 
it was inlay and onlay. It started off with inlay, first generation, where you just placed it on the trochlea, wherever the trochlea was. And the second generation, you perform the anterior cut of a total knee, basically, and place it on the anterior surface where your anterior cut of a TKR would be. That would be the onlay design. So the first generation inlay, basically, you remo remove the worn out cartilage on the trochlea and then just placed the component which could be symmetric or asymmetric but then its position was decided by what the trochlea was. If the trochlea was highly dysplastic, your resurfacing would sit on a highly dysplastic trochlea creating problems as we'll see. Which is why the second generation came where you make your anterior cut similar to your anterior cut of a total knee you completely replace the anterior compartment. These could be symmetric, asymmetric. And then the trochlea extends further pro proximally compared to the other versions. And a much broader trochlea than the inlay type was designed. And you have several different versions of this. You can see generally they are broader. They extend more proximally. They may be symmetric or asymmetric. And then they narrow down into the trochlea. This is one of them and we used to use uh, quite a few of these, um, the Zimmer Biomet gender solutions where you use an intramedullary guide for your anterior cut and, uh, and then use a burr which goes into that sort of zigzag manner and you burr out the cartilage so that you have a perfect seating of the femoral component. Now there's a third generation onlay where the smaller sizes behave as an inlay and the larger sizes you can use as an, as an onlay. So it's a sort of hybrid between the two. So now coming back to trochlear dysplasia, if you use an inlay in the um, dysplastic trochlea, obviously you will see that there's going to be a problem. The onlay does, disregards whatever is going on on the trochlea. Now, maltracking in these inlays were huge, 17 to 36 percent, uh, for the obvious reason that the trochlea was dysplastic and there were soft tissue problems. Whereas with onlay, the patella maltracking reduced to less than 1 percent. So the technique of insertion can be with conventional instruments, computer assisted, robotic, or you now have custom implants, 3D printed also. So uh, there are some studies which showed that with navigation you can improve the rotational position of the trochlea just as your femoral component could be rotated correctly. So the anterior cut was determined by your CT scan measurements. Robotic patellofemoral joints can also be performed and this has also been shown to be extremely precise just like Soha showed with the fixed bearing. You can ensure that there is no overhang, no underhang. It's flush with the surrounding cartilage, just as you would do in a robotic uni. And more recently, not more recently, but for many years this has been available, custom-made uh, implants. Uh, these are um, m more for very dysplastic ones. The Kinemed custom-made one is an onlay based on CT scans, and it recreates the alignment and the depth of the trochlear groove. So you've got to be sure that it's not a very dysplastic uh, trochlea. And then you rasp the cartilage. They provide you with a custom guide with a marker. You mark it out, remove the cartilage, and then drill holes. So the basic failures are late complications because the rest of the joint gets affected. And early complications are related to your maltracking, essentially, which is based on your implant selection and design. So many of these will develop at 15, 20 years degenerative arthritis in the other compartments. So therefore you're doing this for somebody who's much younger and you want to buy time. Uh, in this meta-analysis, they have shown that only versus TKA for isolated PFOA is pretty good. So in that age group, you can consider it provided the other compartments are okay. There's no malalignment. Uh, inlays have a much higher incidence of reoperation and revision. Revisions of PFA, of course, are more like a primary total knee. So you're, there's no major downside to it. It's fairly easy to convert. And uh, 
There are several other technical tips where you have to be very careful with the positioning, the coverage, the impingement with the ACL, prevent the patella catching, to prevent it catching distally, uh, avoid overstuffing. So there are lots of technical points. So you really have to be very, very dedicated to this surgery if you really want to uh, um, get behind and do this. I'll just quickly show you a few cases. This is how we plan it on the MRI. This is a patient with trochlear dysplasia. These are the post-op x-rays and they have phenomenal movement. If you pay attention to it, your results are outstanding and these are a very difficult group of patients with PFOA and if you do a total knee in these, they are not going to be delighted. This is another one with uh, instability and here you can see the alignment in this patient and look at her flexion. So they are extremely, extremely delighted with the operation. And we've done a few bicompartmentals where the patella is as bad as the medial compartment. So we do the UK in the hanging position and then PFA with the leg extended. And this is a bicompartmental x-ray. And here you can see the patient, normal gait, full range of motion. So in summary, PFOA uh, allows for more normal kinematics, probably in the younger patient it's indicated because it gives you better function and activity levels. Um, uh, remember that total knee, if you do it for isolated patellofemoral low A, people are not that happy and they've reported almost 20% will have persistent anterior knee pain. You can even consider bicompartmental arthroplasty in selected patients. And improved results are there with better design and your technique. I think it's a very challenging surgery, but it's very rewarding if done well. Thank you.